Hi guys! In this video we'll be looking at measuring charge stored by a capacitor, capacitance in the farad, number of electrons transferred in a capacitor, and we'll finish with the summary. It would be useful if we knew the amount of charge that a capacitor can store. And actually we can measure this amount of charge that a given capacitor is able to store. So we know that any capacitor is capable of storing a particular charge and we'd like to find out what that charge is. Let's consider a circuit with a variable resistor, a switch, a microammeter, and a cell in series with the capacitor, as well as a voltmeter in parallel with the capacitor. So here are all the circuit symbols for a switch, a capacitor, a voltmeter, a microammeter, which means that it can measure very small variations in current, a variable resistor, which means we can change the resistance of it, and a cell supplying an EMF. This circuit can be used to investigate the relationship between the charge stored on each capacitor plate and the potential difference across the capacitor plates. So we can measure the potential difference by using the voltmeter, and we can also measure the magnitude of the charge stored on each plate. When the switch is closed, the variable resistor is adjusted to keep the microammeter reading constant. So here we've closed the switch in order to complete the circuit, and we've adjusted the variable resistor in order to keep the microammeter reading constant. And this keeps a constant current, which we'll call A, flowing in the circuit. We know that we can calculate the magnitude of charge stored in each plate of the capacitor at any given time using the equation for charge with a constant current. And this equation is that charge Q is equal to current I times time T. We can then use the voltmeter reading to obtain the potential difference across the capacitor at regular time intervals for a constant current. So the current is a constant A, and the voltmeter gives the readings of the potential difference across the capacitor at regular time intervals. So we might start off with the potential difference V1, then V2, V3, V4, etc. And using this, we can produce a graph of charge stored against the potential difference across the capacitor. So on the y-axis, we have the charge stored in a capacitor in units of microcoulombs. And on the x-axis, we have the potential difference across the capacitor, measured in volts. And you can see that this is a straight line graph. And this shows that the charge stored is proportional to the potential difference across the capacitor. So the charge stored Q is proportional to the potential difference across the capacitor. This means that the charge stored on a capacitor per volt of potential difference across the capacitor plate is constant. So if we take delta Q and divide it by the change in volts delta V of the potential difference, we find that the charge stored per volt is constant because the gradient of the graph is constant. We're now going to define a quantity called capacitance and its unit, the farad. We already know that capacitors are electrical components that can store charge. So here's our image of a capacitor with two metal plates separated by an insulator and that charge can be stored across these two plates. We can define the charge stored on a capacitor per volt of potential difference across the capacitor plates as the capacitance of the capacitor. So capacitance is the amount of charge that a capacitor stores per unit of potential difference across it. And we can write down an equation for capacitance. Capacitance of a capacitor C is equal to charge Q measured in coulombs divided by voltage V measured in volts. The unit that's used for capacitance is the farad, or F. One farad is the capacitance which stores one coulomb of charge across a potential difference of one volt. For example, a capacitor has charged 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs when the potential difference across it is 20 volts. What is its capacitance? So here's our capacitor with a potential difference across it of 20 volts, and it stores a charge Q equals 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs. And this is just the magnitude of the charge stored. Remember that one plate will store positive charge and the other plate will store negative charge. Step one is to write down the equation for capacitance. Capacitance C is equal to charge Q divided by potential difference V. And our second step is to substitute in values to find the capacitance. So the capacitance is equal to the charge stored, which is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs, divided by the potential difference across the capacitor, which is 20 volts. And we find that the capacitance is equal to 1.75 times 10 to the minus 3, and its unit is the farad. So the capacitance is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3 farads 
to two significant figures. We're now going to think about the number of electrons that are transferred in a capacitor. We know that the charge on each parallel plate of a capacitor accumulates due to the movement of electrons. So some electrons are moved by potential difference towards the plate, giving it a negative charge. And some electrons are moved away from the plate, giving that plate a positive charge. We know that each electron carries a certain amount of charge with magnitude equal to the elementary charge. So the charge on an electron, little q, is equal to minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So therefore, if we know the total charge on each plate of capacitor, we can find the total number of electrons transferred to or from a plate. The total charge on the capacitor, q, divided by the charge of an electron, little q, is equal to the total number of electrons either the number that's transferred from the plate or the total number that's transferred to the negative plate. For example, a capacitor has capacitance 200 microfarads and is connected to a 15 volt supply. How many electrons, n, have been transferred to the negative plate of the capacitor once the capacitor is fully charged? Step 1. Write down the equation for capacitance. Capacitance C is equal to charge Q divided by voltage V. Step two is to rearrange the equation to find charge. So we do this by multiplying both sides by V to get that charge Q is equal to V times C. Step three is to write down an equation for the number of electrons transferred, N, to the negative plate. So the number of electrons, N, is equal to the total charge Q divided by the charge of an electron. Step four is to substitute the expression for charge into the equation for N. So we know that charge is equal to V times C, and therefore N is equal to V times C divided by little q. Step five is to substitute in values to find the number of electrons transferred N to the negative plate. So N is equal to V, which is 15 volts, multiplied by the capacitance, which is 200 microfarads, or 200 times 10 to the minus six farads, divided by the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. And so the number of electrons is therefore 1.9 times 10 to the 16 electrons to two significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.